hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a few upcoming Nor'easters, so we're going to get right into that, but before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what is the most snow you've ever had from one single snowstorm? Let me know where you were and when it was, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and first things first I wanted to talk about the fact that we have a business account with Weatherbell now which means we're able to use these in our videos very very consistently and pretty much only going to be using these unless there's something else I want to use. So let me know what you think of the new maps. I think they're a lot better. We're able to zoom in further, get more uh, types of data. It's very very awesome. So let me know what you think in the comments of these new graphics we've been using. Let's get right into things and you can see a cold front is placed there over some of the central regions of the United States. That's going to bring some colder temperatures behind it. Of course, we've been talking about that for over a week now, so you're probably tired of hearing about it by this point. So I decided to make a nor'easter video because that's kind of the most prominent thing that is coming up in our forecast. We're obviously in a La Nina, so nor'easters are a little bit more rare in our current pattern. Let's go ahead and move it on towards September 30th. And as you can see, there's a low pressure center developing there over South Carolina and lots of precipitation up and down the East Coast. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to where we're going to see that nor'easter actually begin to take its track up the East Coast. And as you can see here, it is now located over Virginia and we see some heavier precipitation around that nor'easter. By this point, it's going to be bringing 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts, not sustained winds, but wind gusts. We'll be taking a look at that in just a moment, like I said, as well as the total rainfall. So stay tuned for the impacts, the total impacts from this event. But this is only the first of two that are going to be back to back. We see this happen from time to time uh, where these nor'easters like to really um, kind of come in, in bunches. So as we can see, as we move towards October 1st, uh, it's going to be located over uh, Massachusetts, I would say, in between Massachusetts and New Hampshire by this point. And we see our second one developing there over Virginia. Uh, you might have noticed that most of the time that first nor'easter stayed over land. That's pretty frequent. We see that happen where they stay more onshore. Uh, usually in the wintertime, this would mean snow would be further inland and we would see rain for the East Coast. So I know a lot of you would be disappointed in those types of situations. But if you live on the East Coast, you know that's a very frequent type of storm track where they're just a little bit too far inland and too much warm air gets involved and you don't see snow uh, to the east of that system. Hopefully we get some nor'easters this winter. That would be very interesting. So we're seeing them early on. That could be a good sign moving forward. But again, we have our second nor'easter developing here over Virginia and North Carolina. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the beginning of that second nor'easter, which is going to be the far more impactful of the two, actually. So here we are. By the time we're taking a look at just a few hours later, actually, uh, still on October 1st. And as you can see, that second or the first nor'easter, sorry, has mostly moved towards northern Maine. It's kind of moved out where it's pretty much dissipated. Probably a lot of this energy has merged into the second one. And as you can see, that one is a 997 millibar low pressure center over Long Island by this point. Very, very classic nor'easter. Uh, in the wintertime, not to tease you guys, but this would be bringing pretty heavy snowfall for eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, um, I would say upstate New York there, uh, western Massachusetts. I could see this being a classic snowstorm. If this track was to take place during the wintertime, of course we're not in the wintertime, but I just like to think about that kind of stuff. It's very fun to speculate. And also, we're in October, so if this pattern carries over for the next month or two, which is very, very plausible, uh, well, then we could see some snowstorms that take a similar track. Although, again, we're in a La Nina, so... Most likely, we're not going to see as many nor'easters, but I don't want you to feel like nor'easters are impossible. I never want to give that impression because in a lot of La Nina years, we've had massive nor'easters, uh, including you might remember the winter of 2010 to 2011. December of 2010, we had a massive, massive nor'easter blizzard that brought snowfall uh, for the mid-Atlantic, the southeast, and even New England, you know, up to two feet of snow. Very, very major snowstorm. Let me know in the comments if you remember that snowstorm, or maybe you got snowfall from that one. Perhaps it's your comment of the day. If so, let me know. That'd be very interesting. Uh, if that's the most snowfall you've ever seen in a day. Actually, I think it's mine, matter of fact. So, there you go. That's my comment of the day. So, here's the last frame, as you can see, by, I would say, the evening hours, 5 p.m. or so on October 1st. It's pretty much moved out, that second nor'easter. So, we're going to be all said and done 
by the time we're getting towards October 2nd. Uh, it's going to get very dry, but also very cold. This is a lot of good news for the New England states. I know you guys are dealing with a very major drought as well as upstate New York. You guys are going to get a significant amount of rainfall coming up. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the total rainfall through October 2nd. All right, so let's talk about that total rainfall. This is in inches, of course. So anywhere in the greens or grays, that's where you're under half an inch of rain. And nowhere on the East Coast is in the green or grays unless you're in the Outer Banks or perhaps Florida. Outside of that, really, uh, it's hard to find those greens. Maybe Western Pennsylvania is the furthest east region there. Uh, I see a little dot in Central Pennsylvania as well. If you're in the blues, that's where you're half an inch to an inch of rain. So already that's a pretty good amount of rainfall for just a two-day event you know, pretty decent amount. If you're in the yellows or oranges, you're at an inch to two inches, perhaps. If you're in those reds, you're in two to four inches of rain, perhaps five even. So that's pretty much what we see for the most part for a lot of North Carolina, Virginia, the Delmarva there, uh, even all of New Jersey is in the reds, Long Island as well, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Maine, and you can see upstate New York where we're dealing with a drought as well, over an inch up to two inches of rain. This is all very, very good news for you guys because, again, you're dealing with actually a quite significant drought, almost extreme levels. I think there is some areas in there that are classified as extreme levels of drought. But as you can see, plenty of areas there, especially New Hampshire, um, we can see in Maine up to up to five inches of rain there in the, that kind of grayish area. So, yeah, three to five inches of rain, pretty widespread for New England. Very good news for the drought, and it might even take you down a level. Uh, it's going to really help soak up the ground, which is much, much needed in that area, like I've been saying. Let's take a zoomed in look at New England real quick, just as it pertains to that drought. Upstate New York, you're most likely going to get an inch to two, maybe even three inches of rain. Again, very, very good news. Connecticut, you're getting anywhere from two if you're on the western edge to even five if you're on the eastern edge of the state. Rhode Island is anywhere, I would say, probably around three inches. It's a pretty small state, so it's not going to vary too much. Same story in Massachusetts, pretty similar to Connecticut. We see Vermont is going to get anywhere from maybe just under an inch to about two inches of rain if you're in the very, very southern portion of the state. New Hampshire, you're at two to five inches of rain, going to do very good there. I think New Hampshire has the most significant drought out of any of the states. You can correct me if you live up there and I'm wrong, uh, but I think New Hampshire and Maine are maybe dealing with the most major uh, drought conditions there. We also see Maine going to get a significant amount of rain if you're there near the coastal regions, up to five inches of rain, which is really just going to soak up the ground, like I said before. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to start talking about the wind real quick, which could as well be just as significant as the rainfall. Uh, at times, if you're in some certain regions, you could deal with up to 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. We'll talk about all of that in just a moment. We're going to start out and we're going to be taking a look at each individual frame kind of and just taking a look. Okay, well, at this time you could be dealing with this much wind gust, but we're also going to take a look at the total swath, which means it's actually going to take the uh, entire model run and it's going to show you the maximum wind gust you can expect during the entire run at any point. So that's going to be very useful as well. But we're starting out early on Wednesday morning, September 30th, and this is our first nor'easter and second one. The second one is kind of forming down there to the south. If you're in the blues, you're under 34 mile per hour wind gusts, which is anywhere from slight to maybe moderate. Pretty nuisance, you know, you might some get some leaves that fall down, but really uh, nothing significant. Once you're in that green region, 34 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, that's when it could bring down some uh, very small branches or perhaps some very dry ones if you're in the drought regions. That's also something we're going to be need to be thinking about. Those branches could be a little bit drier and more susceptible to cracking. Uh, so let's go ahead and move it on, and this is going to be Thursday later in the morning, and as you can see, New England starts to get most of the winds from that first nor'easter. Anywhere from uh, in the greens, again, 34 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, you can see there in between Massachusetts and New Hampshire, we're dealing with easily 45 mile per hour wind gusts. So again, that's going to be enough to bring down some branches, could maybe minor damage, maybe, perhaps, I don't really know, I don't think so, but possibly if in special circumstances, but it's this second one that's arriving by October 1st, Thursday morning that really could cause some damage. As you can see, uh, we have widespread greens along the coast. This one's a little bit more offshore, but we can see greens reaching the Massachusetts coast there. Uh, also the Maine coast, uh, Long Island going to deal with that as well. But the yellows and reds start to show up here. We see easily 
for uh, portions like, I would say, Cape Cod, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, 60 mile per hour wind gusts potentially. Same story for portions of the main coast. That's definitely going to be able to cause some damage. So we're going to want to really, really watch that closely. Now here's that wind gust swath, like I said, accumulated max wind gust swath. And this is a really, really cool map because, again, it's your maximum winds, wind gusts you're going to feel through October 2nd afternoon, which, again, is when that those nor'easters will be completely moved out. So if you're anywhere in the blues, you're under 34 uh, mile per hour wind gusts. So, again, that's probably minor. If you're in the greens, you're anywhere from 34 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, which is moving towards moderate. If you're anywhere in the yellows or reds, you're anywhere from about 50 to perhaps 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And we even see a little bit of that brown shade move in uh, for perhaps, again, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, or Cape Cod. That's really where we're talking about potentially 70 mile per hour wind gusts plus, uh, which is very, very significant. So if you're in those oranges, if you're in those browns, you're going to want to really uh, be prepared. This could be a pretty major nor'easter situation with those, with those wind totals there. And this is all going to move out again by October 2nd. And by October 3rd, look at the temperature anomalies. It's going to give way to far below normal temperatures for most of the eastern United States. And I know on this frame, New England isn't in that yet, but eventually you guys will feel those uh, blues and greens move in as well, which is going to indicate below normal temperatures. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you want October to get colder, warmer, or do you want it to be the same as September? And Robert Baker said, I prefer the cooler weather and take joy when summer ends. And I know a lot of us feel that way. I usually am ready for the colder weather once summer is coming to an end. And once winter's coming to an end, I'm usually w ready for the warmer weather. That's pretty much how everybody is though. So I'm not trying to say that's anything special, but that's just how I feel this time of year. I'm excited for the cold. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Madbird, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, and Mark J, alongside our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.